So in this video, I wanted to spend a few minutes talking about this really cool new old stock pen I bought recently. It's called the Fisher Space Pen Futura. So obviously Fisher Space Pen is uh, the company that makes the space pens, the original astronaut space pens like the AG7 and the CH4. The company has made a lot of other pens over the years and they've been making pens since I believe the early 60s, maybe even the late 50s. So they have a long history and they have a lot more models than just the bullet pen and the space pen. So uh, I picked this one, this one up just kind of as I saw it online and it seemed cool, it was a good deal. So uh, yeah, here it is. It's called the Fisher Space Pen Futura. Uh, I don't know the exact years this pen was made, but I know this one is from the late 80s. Uh, it's hard to research old pens, unless it's like a Mont Blanc or something famous like that, or, you know, Pelican, because the history of these isn't really documented that well. But one interesting thing with Fisher is that on their refills, they print the, you can see they print the year the refill was made. So this one was made in August 1987. You can see it right there, 887. So if you have an original refill from the pen, then you could be pretty sure this pen was made sometime in uh, 1987, 1986, right, right around there. And I bought this new old stock, so I have no reason to believe the refill would have been switched. So uh, anyway, here's the packaging. <laughs> it is like, it has really uh, seen some time, even though it was new old stock. I mean, look at that sticker. This thing's been kicking around an attic or a desk or the back of a dusty office for a very long time. Uh, this thing is it's, it's clearly very old, but you know, it's a 30 plus year old pen, so it's pretty cool to survive at all. Uh, we'll look at this refill real quick and we'll get into the pen. Uh, it's the same Fisher PR4 refill that they still make, essentially. I don't think they called it the PR4 then. Actually, they did. They did call it the PR4. Uh, it's the same exact refill. The font is different. It has this really cool italic font that they don't use anymore. And it has that sort of space age feel to it. Again, 1987, uh, same patent number they still use. Obviously, yeah, that hasn't changed. Here's the pen. It is uh, it has kind of an 80s vibe, uh, kind of a Japanese pen feel to it from that time. Was it's sleek. We'll see it has a uh, relatively large diameter button relative to the body of the pen. It's very thin. Uh, a lot of pens from the 80s, the 70s and 80s, uh, they are very thin and uh, they just feel much thinner than today's pens. Just take a look at, uh, here's a, I don't know, this uh, Fisher, sorry, this uh, Sharpie S-Gel, which is a $2.50 metal pen. It has an extra like, I don't know, five millimeters or something like that. Uh, maybe not five, like four millimeters relative to this Fisher it, like, is much larger in diameter than this, this Fisher pen. So uh, it's just interesting to see these older pens have such slim bodies. It's one of the reasons that people tend to collect only a small amount of older pens because these things have sort of fallen out of style. We see it has a really nice angular front metal piece here, a metal knurled grip here, which is very cool. It's really nicely done. It looks like a rotaring type knurling. Uh, rotaring came out with their knurling, I guess in the early 90s when they started really using it. So that's in keeping, has a chrome cutout. I guess it's not chrome. That This is probably the knurling is probably aluminum and that's probably just polished aluminum in there. Then we go back to the brushed stainless steel we see a uh, metal clip and it says uh, Futura by Fisher and that sort of, uh, that kind of, that uh, all caps. I don't know what font that is, but it's it's not that space font we're seeing from the, uh, from the refill. And then there's a very cool button here. It has a sort of mushroom shape. It is metal. And when it pushes down, it'll go fully into the body. It's very cool and then nice click back. It's sprung, so even though the tip is out now, you still have uh, pressure in the spring, but it stays out, it stays at a consistent height, whether the refill is in or out. On the top here, in this sort of uh, finial piece, if we could see that, it is looks to be black metal, but I would not be shocked if that was just a black sticker. It's hard to tell what that is. I can't get my fingernail in there. It it almost looks like a black sticker because it looks like it's just a little bit off. 
I doubt it was a lacquer. So it might be a piece of black metal that was just kind of stuck on there. Uh, it's hard to tell. I don't want to take it apart. It'd be a shame to have this pen last in perfect order for 30 plus years and for me to ruin it uh, so soon after getting it. But anyway, it's a nice little touch. So uh, nice click. You know, it's not, uh, not like an AG7 or CH4. This is not that level of pen. It's not one of their flagship astronaut pens. It's just a cool kind of everyday pen from Fisher. Open it up, a little bit of squeak, nice firm spring. Springs from the uh, 80s and early 90s are like just so much better than today's springs. They just are a lot stronger and uh, they just have more weight to them. Springs have been, they must be one area where people or pen manufacturers have really cut costs over the years. So see, we see this refill, uh, same, same logo. This one's in better shape than the one that stood out. Also 887, so uh, that's why I know or why I would venture to guess that both these refills are authentic and the pen actually is new old stock. Otherwise, what's the chance you would have two 887 matching refills lying around? And the refills look really similar. Uh, no real color difference, even though one was in the pen for 30 years and one was exposed. So I doubt this thing was like in the sunlight or anything like that. And I see a little bit, a little piece here, and that appears to be plastic. It might be metal. It's hard to tell. Based on how Fisher makes their pens, I'm almost sure it's metal. Uh, but this is just a little piece here that will uh, separate out, just visually separate out the uh, front piece, the front metal piece, and the body, and actually has a little bit of taper. So that step down is just a little more uh, gradual than it would be if you went straight from the barrel to this pretty skinny metal piece. So pretty nice pen. Futura is not one of uh, Fisher's popular or sought after pens, but I have seen them kicking around for a while. I will say it is on the small side. So this is for me more of a, a pen I would use for just jotting down some notes or just some quick writing. Even this, uh, this knurling area is, these are half inch markings. So it's just kind of a little bit over a half inch. It's like, uh, you know, half and a sixteenth or two. So it's quite small. As for the pen's overall size, it is one, two, three, four, you know, five and, uh, you know, call it five and a half inches. And that's being generous. You know, you look at something from that age, this is like a, maybe a, uh, this is a Schaefer Sentinel, which is a short pen, sort of like a jotter pen. It's about the same length. You move to something more recent, uh, Sharpie SGL. You see it is uh, almost a half inch longer and then obviously much, much wider. And then uh, I don't even know what I have lying around here. Here's a uh, Uniball Vision, Vision Elite or whatever. And it's a, a much larger pen. Obviously when it's plastic, it makes it easier to make it larger. And then uh, here it is with no cap. A little bit shorter. I'll do a writing sample, but obviously uh, it's more about how impressive these refills are than anything else. I wouldn't expect it to write really nicely after 30 years, but I could tell you that 1987 refill still writes. Uh, this is the Fisher Space Pen Futura. I believe Futura is actually a font. I'd be, it'd be funny if this font was Futura. I need to check that out. I should have researched that beforehand. Uh, if anyone knows, if you have any font fans, let me know if that's Futura. That would be That'd be a good spot by Fisher, but I don't think it is. Anyway, so this is a 30-year-old refill that, you know, it, it, there's definitely some hesitancy to write. It definitely feels a little bit uh, kind of dry, a little bit draggy, but it is writing. Doesn't quite have the sort of depth of color that I'd like to see. It's a little bit light. Uh, and a little bit inconsistent, but it totally works. And I bet if you were to write with this thing, you would get the full, you know, 5,000 meters or whatever you're supposed to get out of these refills. 
just for comparison, here's a here's a new like a, a new pen in like what I would consider to be a true black. So you can see it is a good deal lighter. Let's test that test out those other refill that 1987 refill and see if this one writes. Uh, not quite. Hmm, that's too bad. You should see some gunk collected out here from the pressure of the pressurized refill pushing ink out, and this doesn't have that. Uh, so I don't know if this one will be able to be revived. Might have to apply a little bit of heat, or maybe I'll put it in, over, in hot water overnight and see if it'll come out, but that one's not writing. This one that was in the pen, I don't know if that made much of a difference, but clearly it's able to write. So we'll see if I can get any uh, any use out of this other one. That would be that would be very cool. Anyway, that's the uh, Fisher Space Pen Futura. Cool pen, uh, you know, cool kind of of its time pen, that kind of late 80s, early 90s vibe. Uh, really nice knurling, good metal work. Not really a highly collectible pen and not really one I'd recommend going out and, and grabbing. I think this video, watch this video a few times, you're probably getting most of what you're looking for from picking up a Fisher Futura. It's a nice pen, but uh, not something that is uh, truly blows my mind. I just I just noticed this. Uh, made in Japan, so definitely a, a departure for Fisher, who normally makes their pens in the U.S. So I said the pen had sort of a Japanese feel to it. I guess that makes sense. Uh, I'm going to have to do some more research into this one. Anyway, that's a Fisher Futura. Cool pen, but definitely not a must-buy. I've enjoyed using it. But uh, again, not something I would really recommend people tracking down. Thanks for watching.